Now, the other item that I wanted to touch on was the changes that the government's proposing to regulatory systems, to environmental assessment. In the north, they take two forms. One of them, of course, is some, something that was inserted into the federal, into this bill, uh, changes to the, the federal environmental assessment, taking away certain triggers that would, would, would start a federal environmental assessment, changing the law so that the minister could set the scope of environmental assessment, federal environmental assessment. These are really large issues for people in the north. Because so much of, of our land and our resources are shared with the federal government. We're, we're also the, the receptor of so much of the impacts of resource development in, in provinces, inter, interprovincial transfers of water and air. The impacts of those on, on, our, on our systems are great. And we can't afford to see that the federal government reneges its responsibility to, to create environmental assessments that speak to all Canadians. We can't see that, we can't turn environmental assessment into a regional issue when it's a national issue and, a, and, a, and, and, and expect that we'll get the results that we want for this country in the future. We might get more convenience for provincial governments. We may get more convenience for, for large corporations that want to play provincial governments off each other in the development of resources. We, all those things may occur with, with uh, decline in federal environmental assessment, but it doesn't solve the problems of the environment. And that's what we're here to protect as, as legislators, as members of parliament, as Canadians, we're here to protect the environment, not to allow it to be degraded. And what's happening here with the federal environmental assessment in this budget implementation bill is wrong. Now, when it comes to the territorial uh, environmental assessment, when we talk about the Mackenzie Valley Resource Management Act, the government's put $11 million in there to change the act. The act which has never been fully implemented Everyone, from the McCrank report through all the, all the boards to the people there said, finish the act off. Get the land use plans in place for the people of the north. Before you judge how an act works, you finish it. You make it whole. What we have now is a situation that is not whole, and what we have to do is move that forward. Not find ways that we can circumvent the legislation that we can streamline it so it doesn't work, but something that's going to work for Northerners. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. In comments, uh, the Honourable Member for Etobicoke North. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honourable oh. Colleague for his questions and comments. Were you you were rising, sir? <laughs> I just want to thank the Honourable Member for his comments, particularly regarding the Aboriginal Healing Foundation. And regarding the environment, in the Arctic, climate change is not only an environmental issue, but also a social justice issue. Those who are most heavily impacted have had the least responsibility for it. Climate change is real, it's happening now, and the Arctic is the canary in the coal mine. I'd like the, I'm wondering if the Honourable Member can discuss the climate impacts in the Arctic today and what action the government should be taking. The Honourable Member for Western Arctic. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague for her very pertinent question. Certainly, climate change is affecting the North in, in a wide variety of ways. One of the ways stands out today, and that's the decline of the caribou herds. One of the major points of sustenance, cultural, cultural importance, and uh, these herds are in decline because climate change has, has altered the, the uh, ability for uh, breeding, that has changed the landscape for, for, uh, for vegetation, and those impacts uh, really are very difficult to deal with. But what we see here is a federal government uh, in the last uh, six months and says, we're, we're not concerned about that. 
we'll just leave that up in the hands of northerners even though the legislation clearly puts it in our con in in our responsibility so we what we see is this federal government not paying attention to an issue that it should be paying attention to under law if they continue to do that perhaps the only solution is to turn it over to the people of the north so that they can take care of the animals in a correct fashion and comments uh, the honorable member for for Timmins Timmins James Bay I apologize. thank you madam speaker I, I listened with great interest to my honorable colleague and I was very struck by his line that said that we are all called here because we have an obligation to protect the environment and I think of the situation that's happening on the James Bay Coast right now, all across Nishnabiaski territory, with the ice roads melting. Uh, we've never seen uh, ice go out this quickly. It's had a devastating effect. And the most impoverished communities in Canada, the northern Aboriginal communities, are facing serious shortfalls. They are living with the consequences of climate change now. And so I go back to the, his comment that we're all here to protect the environment, and I'd like to suggest to him, that many of us are here to protect the environment, but a certain party in this house is here to protect the interests of the Alberta oil and gas sector. The Prime Minister himself said his job and his party was to build a firewall to defend the tar sands. So I'd like to ask my honourable colleague, when we look at Bill C-9 and we see nothing for the environment, nothing for protecting communities that are already living with the impacts of climate change, but we see a bill that is tailor-made to allow the pillaging of the tar sands to continue, to allow that the people who are making the most money off destroying the environment continue to make that kind of money, while our poor communities in the north are suffering and paying the price of this government's inaction. If he doesn't think that it would have been fair that we actually look at dealing with the tar sands so that our communities, our poor communities on the James Bay and elsewhere, can at least have some protection as climate change is hitting them now. The Honourable Member for Western Arctic. Well, uh, yes, the tar sands are an enormous problem. They're an enormous environmental problem for Canada. But they also, in putting the tar sands together in a fashion that works, are a great opportunity as well for economic development. What has happened with the tar sands is they started off as a very... Uh, uh, mediocre oil, oil development in this world and have escalated to a point where, every, where with the price of oil they're very profitable and everybody wants in on it and they've been given free license to deal with the environment. We need to change that now and put uh, proper uh, guidelines and procedures and laws in place that will protect the environment and will ensure that these tar sands, which are an enormous resource to Canada, are handled correctly. Instead, we have this government right now playing this game with our environment rather than dealing with it. And that's the problem. <laughs>